Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear friends of Convoco, a very warm welcome to all of you. I'm glad to welcome you again to the Convoco lecture in Berlin at the SMT on the perhaps surprising topic, what is the optimal level of inequality? Even though we could make the Convoco Forum possible during the years of the pandemic, we could not have the Convoco lectures as well. Instead, we introduced a very successful format, the Convoco podcasts. Our podcasts have become an essential part of Convoco's work. They keep us in touch with you and they broaden our network. In the past two years, we have recorded close to 80 episodes. 80. In 2022, Convoco's wider subject for discussion is equality in an unequal world. By focusing on equality, we complete the trio of liberté, fraternité, and égalité. In 2017, we discussed the common good, fraternité, last year freedom, liberté, and today now equality. Freedom and equality are interdependent. Throughout history, the concept of freedom has always been challenged and redefined by questions of equality. In the wake of the Enlightenment, freedom and equality were thought to be not just interdependent, but complementary. Take, for example, the idea of the social contract. Equality is the binding force for a society of free individuals and especially so in constitutional democracies. In the context of democracy, our main concern lies with legal, political, and of course, economic equality. Artikel 3 of the German Grundgesetz establishes equality before the law. The unequal treatment of that which is equal is not allowed. In this way, the so-called prohibition of arbitrariness, Willkürverbot, is anchored in the German constitution. But legal equality is not enough. Material deprivation leads to social exclusion and a lack of political power. Democracy thus requires not just formal equality, but a certain level of social equality to create a society of free citizens. For many decades, equality of opportunity was considered the starting point of a just world. Recently, however, this seems not sufficient anymore. Rising economic inequality and an increasingly divided society demand different approaches. The success of populism is a sign that we are losing the balance within our societies. Therefore, the idea of equality of opportunity has increasingly been put under pressure. Calls for an equality of outcome are getting louder. What can be observed is that the term of equality is more and more replaced by the idea of equity. The following example explains the difference between equality and equity. Imagine two people of different heights standing at a fence watching a football match. If we were to treat them equally, we would give them both the same size crate to stand on. The relative height difference between the two people remains. The equitable approach would be to give the shorter person a bigger crate to stand on. The result is the effective size of both people gets equalized. Not 
just increasing economic inequality, but the surge of identity politics fuels demands for more equity, meaning here equality of outcomes. Let's take a closer look at the question of equality in identity politics. The starting point here is an emphasis on difference. A conscious demarcation takes place. The goal is to tip the balance in favor of one's own, often victimized group, and to achieve an equality of outcome by means of unequal treatment. This unequal treatment is considered necessary because of past harms and systemic discrimination. An equal approach is replaced by an equitable approach. Think, for example, of cases of affirmative action policies. Unfortunately, identity politics can separate instead of unite. Our global community is under new and more complicated pressures and in danger of splitting up because of many reasons. The terrible war in Ukraine risks destroying the already emerging universalism. One central idea of universalism is that all people and states are equal. And this momentum could get lost if we don't pay attention. We are called on, we are all called on, to reflect on this situation. Today's event is the first lecture of this year's Convoco topic. It's titled, What is the Optimal Level of Inequality Already Implies? On the one hand, that inequality is an undisputable fact of human society, whether we like it or not. On the other hand, that inequality must stay within reasonable level for society to live with it and possibly even to benefit from it. For the English philosopher and political economist John Stuart Mill, Inequality and competition are what forces political and social systems to adapt. Often, inequality is seen as a key factor for social mobility. Inequality is here seen as a motivation. This belief entails a sort of meritocratic mobility and that the possibility of such mobility is indeed a necessary condition for an unequal society to be a fair one. A belief in meritocratic mobility is associated with more tolerance for inequality. Sadly, in the past years, the extent of mobility has gone down, especially in the US. The country with the legend from Tellerwäsche to Millionaire, from rags to riches. The, the gap between the richest and the poorest is growing wider and wider. One reason for this, among others, is the technological evolution. Very sadly, a meritocratic system does not foster demut a conscience that we owe our success to a large extent to good fortune. Were we born in the right country, in a supporting family? Were we educated in a good school? Did we have mentors? Don't underestimate the good luck in your own CV. Without inequality, there is no progress. But how much inequality do we need? How much inequality is not just permissible, but conducive to society? How much inequality is acceptable in a just world? These are the questions. Let me welcome today's speakers. 
Tonight's keynote speaker is Professor Francisco Ferreira. Francisco Ferreira is Amatia Sen Professor of Inequality Studies at the London School of Economics. And he's also the director of the university's International Inequalities Institute. Very warm welcome. But first, please welcome with me Professor Jens Beckert. He will give the introduction tonight. Jens Beckert is director at the Max Planck Institute for the Study of Societies in Cologne. A very warm welcome to you, Professor Becker. May I hand over to you? Thank you. 